Friends, I'm delighted to welcome you to a discussion on research methodology. Uh, we are uh, we know about research methods, but what what are the what is the philosophy behind those methods? Why do we choose certain methods, and what are the assumptions we make behind those methods? So a lot of the terms we uh, use in research methodology, that is what we are going to discuss today. And uh, my attempt will be to demystify many of these uh, concepts like uh, epistemology, like ontology, for example. So let's begin uh, today's discussion. So as I said, uh, the first thing that we'll talk about is ontology. These terms are very familiar to many of us, but as I said, we'll try and demystify this. Epistemology and then the three different uh, research methodologies that we'll be talking about, the positivist uh, social science, the interpretivist social science and the critical social science. So let's begin the discussion with uh, ontology first. So uh, it deals with the nature of being or what exists. And uh, I'm sure uh, we, we come across many uh, such definitions and, and I'll try and give examples about that as well. So it asks about what really is and what are the fundamental categories of reality. So that's what we are going to uh, discuss in uh, today's uh, discussion. And when we do many of these studies, we make assumptions about what we will study and its place in the world. So we'll talk about all that. So what actually is reality? And we will talk about that. What we see uh, in the world, is that what reality is or what? Or is it something that we interpret? So that's what uh, uh, ontology is. So basically, the ontological assumptions are between these two extremes. One is realism and the other is nominalism. So we will be talking of realist ontology and a nominalist ontology. So uh, what, what is behind these terms? So a realist assumes that whatever we see in the world is reality. And uh, so, so it's, 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 it's a form of saying what you see is what you get. But a nominalist uh, uh, thinks uh, of reality as something beyond what we see. I'm, I'm sure it, it makes a lot of sense to understand that realism is about uh, something that we, we see with our senses or with an extension of our senses. It could be some machine or whatever. And nominalism is about uh, some kind of an interpretation that you make uh, about the world. Uh, and uh, it's about what you see is not what you get. So when we talk of reality, this is a very, very important assumption to understand. That is, is reality what we see or is it something beyond that? So uh, ontology is, is basically about that, that what is reality? So as I said, a realist assumes that the real world exists independently and it exists independently of humans and their interpretation. So it does not depend on our interpretations, but it depends on, on uh, uh, it, 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 is, it is real out there. It is something out there and our job is just to uh, uh, understand it or just to make sense of it. So uh, the, this makes accessing what is in the real world less difficult because you're just uh, whatever you see is what you get. So that's a very uh, uh, straightforward assumption to make that uh, you, you don't have to deal with interpretations or things like that. A nominalist, on the other hand, uh, always believes that the real experience is, is not the real thing. The real uh, world is, is not everything. It's, it's a scheme of interpretations. And it is that inner subjectivity. I mean, different people uh, have different interpretations of the world. And, and uh, that is what is more important rather than, you know, looking out for something which exists out there. So uh, reality is something which is beyond uh, what we see through our senses. And uh, this nominalist uh, experience talks of subjective cultural factors. And uh, all, all these cultural factors are the ones which, which uh, shape our experience with the physical and the social world. And we can never totally remove these factors. These factors will always be there. Uh, an extreme nominalist would say that our basic understanding of every physical social experience depends heavily on these interpretive uh, cultural factors. So any form of uh, objective knowledge is impossible. So an extreme nominalist would be on the extreme right side of the continuum between realism and uh, nominalism. I shared a, a few slides ago. And now we come to a, 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 a very important uh, discussion on what is epistemology? That how do we know the world? And uh, how, how do we know what, what claim is, is true? 
so uh, as 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 you can understand that uh, how we know the world is based on the ontological assumptions so if i talk about a realist uh, ontology then how we know will be different from uh, when we talk about a nominalist ontology if you remember when we talk of a realist ontology we talk about things which are out there and something that we just have to uh, experience our senses and make sense of it and a nominalist ontology is something different from that so epistemology includes what we need to do to produce knowledge so what are the things that we need to produce knowledge or to get knowledge about certain things and what the scientific knowledge looks like once we have produced it that means what is good science so how how do you get that knowledge and uh, how do you understand that whether that knowledge is sufficient or or good enough so uh, as i said that these epistemological positions depend on on the uh, ontologies so the first is the realist position and it suggests that we can produce knowledge and learn about reality by making careful observations about it because uh, 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 what is reality is just out there so if we carefully observe about uh, uh, what is out there then we uh, get to know uh, or, or we get knowledge so uh, that is one epistemology that just a careful observation provides us with uh, uh, knowledge about the reality and as we gather this empirical evidence we we may find that some of our ideas are consistent with the evidence while others lack supporting evidence so if i get evidence for my ideas then that then that idea is correct if i don't get evidence for my ideas if i don't get empirical evidence means real life evidence then those ideas are not correct so that is a realist position and uh, as we investigate empirical reality we can distinguish truth from myth or illusion and we can produce objective knowledge there because knowledge is uh, objective in the sense that it is out there and it does not depend on who is measuring or who is uh, trying to find out that knowledge so that's a very straightforward way of uh, finding out what is objective knowledge and working inductively and deductively we can distinguish what is true and what is false so 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 as i said i mean if we get evidence about a particular idea then that idea is true if we don't get evidence for that idea that idea is not true so uh, then we come to the nominalist position and uh, as as we've been discussing from the first slide making observations will not lead to knowledge about reality because that knowledge depends on interpretations and subjective views so uh, the best knowledge we can produce about the world is when we offer carefully considered interpretations of specific people in specific settings so there is nothing uh, like a universal truth it is about what specific people have to uh, uh, say or have to pro provide their interpretations about in a specific setting and uh, uh, once we've discussed what is uh, epistemology and what is ontology let's have a discussion on what is a paradigm so it is a whole system of thinking so it includes the basic assumptions it includes the important questions to be answered it includes the research techniques to be used and what good scientific research looks like so when we talk of the three important uh, paradigms of social science research when we talk of positivism when we talk of uh, interpretivism and we talk of critical theory this is what we'll be talking about so positivism is what we start off with so that is uh, one one very important uh, uh, strand of research so it is the approach of the natural sciences the basic sciences physics chemistry biology and all that so here we prefer even in social science in positivist uh, social science we prefer precise quantitative data so the data we get in uh, you know experiments and and surveys and uh, such things and we can use statistics to make sense of that data so we seek rigorous exact measures and this is what is known as objective research so 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 positivist researchers uh, try and uh, replicate the uh, approach of the natural sciences and there may also be causal hypothesis that means what causes what so uh, that that we find out by analyzing numbers from the measures so we analyze the numbers from the measures and we look for those causes so uh, the, this is the definition for for positivist social science it suggests that it's an organized method for combining deductive logic that means you deduce uh, uh some some interpretations or some inferences from the data with precise empirical observation so that precise empirical observation is important so it can be through experiments as i suggested it could be through surveys and 
we are uh, looking at a set of causal universal laws and that can be used to predict general patterns of human activity so this is uh, a very very important uh, thing to uh, remember about positivist social science that it depends on, on precise empirical observations and uh, the idea is to discover and confirm a set of causal laws that what are uh, so 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 a causes b in these kind of things so that we can use these laws to predict human activity in future so as you can understand this is one way of replicating the basic sciences so purpose of positivist research is to obtain scientific explanation so we are trying to discover and document universal causal laws of human behavior so in these circumstances a human being would behave uh, like that so so as you can understand a lot of this is there in, in uh, psychology and, and uh, such uh, social sciences so so we are looking at, at these kind of uh, causal laws and uh, the positivists adopt a realist ontology and as you remember realism is, is about something which exists out there it is just waiting to be discovered so reality exists it is patterned and it has a natural order so this is how we uh, uh, or this is the ontology that we uh, adopt in uh, positivism and positivism also emphasizes the determinism of relationship so there are certain determining me mechanisms as i said uh, we are looking for causal uh, uh, interpretation so that is about uh, uh, that is that is one kind of determinism that given these situations people will react like this or given these situations people will behave like this so we are looking for these determining mechanisms and what are the effects that it produces what are the behavioral and and other kind of cognitive effects that uh, uh, certain mechanisms produce so so based on, on these uh, 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 stimulus what are the responses these kind of things so uh, positivism emphasizes de determinism and it also investigated how the external forces or, 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 or structures that operates on in individuals produce uh, certain kinds of outcomes behaviors or attitudes so given uh, a certain kind of job satisfaction how would people behave or, or not behave so uh, as, as, as we've discussed positivism assumes that the laws operate according to strict logical reasoning so there is uh, some kind of a law and everything uh, operates according to that and researchers connect uh, these causal laws and deductively connect the many facts that they observe so so they are looking at some kind of a, uh, a universal uh, uh, explanation for uh, m many of these uh, phenomena and laws of uh, the, these laws of human behavior are universally valid and they are valid in all historical eras and, and all uh, cultures so as i said this is a, a, a way of uh, replicating the scientific method where you uh, you you talk about uh, uh, certain uh, um, uh, laws which are valid in, in all circumstances and these laws are used to predict the future as well predict in the future as well so these empirical facts exist apart from personal ideas and thoughts they are not thoughts they are not ideas they exist out there and we can just experience them as i said using our sense organs or special instruments that extend the senses it could be telescope microscopes or, or many other instruments so uh, now let's talk about interpretivism which is a different uh, paradigm of social science research so we've discussed positivism and we know that it is something that we do using surveys and, and experiments and all that and interpretism is is, is is very different from that so it is the analysis of socially meaningful action through the direct detailed observation of people in natural settings so if you remember the ethnographic approach that would be one kind of an interpretism uh, interpretivism where uh, maybe uh, through a uh, uh, participant observation or otherwise you observe people directly in their natural uh, settings in order to arrive at understanding and interpretations of how people create and maintain their social world that how people live their everyday life so uh, interpretative uh, social science is related to the, f uh, the field of hermeneutics so basically this is about a theory of meaning which originated in the 19th century and this word hermeneutics is derived from the greek god hermes who had the job of communicating the desires of the gods to uh, mortals so in other words interpreting the desire of gods to the mortals so it literally makes means making the obscure plain so so that is what uh, interpretative social science is related to to the, the to the philosophy of hermeneutics to the philosophy of interpreting it, it, it in uh, obscure play uh, uh, interpreting the obscure to make it plain 
So uh, a lot of the humanities uh, uh, disciplines, they use hermeneutics. It emphasizes conducting a very close, detailed uh, reading of texts to under, uh, acquire a profound, deep understanding. So one is supposed to have a very uh, close, detailed uh, reading of the text. And th that text could be anything that could be uh, uh, people talking, that could be uh, uh, print, that could be electronic or, or any other thing. So we conduct a reading to discover deeper, richer meanings that are embedded within the text. So each reader has his or her own subjective experience to the text. So everyone has his or her own uh, framework of, of experience to bring to, to the uh, text and uh, uh, this reader brings his or her subjective experience to the text. So this is, this is uh, uh, dependent on, on the individual and, and, and on, on the context. So it has several varieties. It, it has uh, the interpretive social sciences. It has it is uh, hermeneutics, as I said. We also talk of constructionism, uh, ethnometrology, uh, which I have uh, discussed in another uh, video, uh, cognitive, idealist, phenomenological, subjectivist, and qualitative uh, sociology. So we call it qualitative because most interpretative researchers use uh, participant observation and field research. So the goal of interpretivism is to develop an understanding of social life and discover how people construct meaning in natural settings. So the meaning is constructed, it is not given. So the uh, interpretive researcher wants to learn what is meaningful or relevant to the people he is studying and how they experience everyday life. So it's not something which is out there, but what people, uh, what, what they make sense of. So mobile phone might might not just be mobile phone for these people. It, it, it could be, how is it relevant to them in their uh, everyday life? And how do they use it? And uh, how, how does it regulate their everyday life, for example? Uh, so uh, very different from uh, positivism, which uses a uh, realist ontology. Uh, this ISS adopts a nominalist ontology. And social reality is largely what people perceive it to be. It exists as people experience it and assign meaning to it. So, so social reality is uh, not something which is out there, but what people perceive it to be. So it exists as people's experience. So how do they experience and what meaning do they uh, assign to it? And that is why uh, these researchers say that social reality is fluid and fragile. So it, 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 dif it differs from uh, uh, people to people it because people construct it as they interact with others. People construct social reality while they interact with others. And this is uh, very f uh, fluid and fragile. It, it, it can change. So it's, it's, uh, that is the ontology of uh, interpretive social science. It is also constructionist in orientation because it assumes that people construct reality out of their interactions and beliefs. So reality is not something which is there uh, out there. Or it, there is no inner essence that causes the reality, but what, uh, 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 what people make sense of that or how do people construct that reality. So instead of uh, interconnected the theories that we saw in positivism, a theory here tells a story. It describes and interprets how people conduct their daily lives. So it may contain some of the social science concepts and generalizations, but it does not uh, depart uh, uh, dramatically from the lived experiences. So what do people make sense of it? So what do people you, who you are studying in particular uh, context, what do they make uh, of it or what do they make of reality as you see it so that is more important so it sees uh, features of specific context uh, specific context is very important because that uh, uh, determines what uh, meaning people uh, assign to those, those facts or those realities as, as we would uh, call them so the specific context is uh, very uh, important to understand this social meaning so evidence about social action cannot be uh, isolated from the context or the meaning. So, so whatever action you uh, see a particular community taking, it's what they see as or it's what they, what meaning they assign to it and what is the context in which it is happening is more important. Now we come to the last part of uh, this discussion and it is about a very important uh, concept which is known as the critical uh, social science. And it is uh, uh, traced to the writings of Karl Marx uh, 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 and Sigmund Freud and also the later influences, which includes many from the uh, uh, Frankfurt School, which includes Theodore Adorno, Eric Fromm and Herbert Marcuse.
So uh, let's define what is uh, critical social science. So it is a critical process of inquiry that goes beyond surface in, uh, illusions to uncover the real structures in the material world. So it is not just what, what we see as reality, but what are the real structures. So it's not also about what, what, what sense people make of it or, or how people interpret it, but, but uh, what are the real structures in the material world. So, so, uh, so a political economic approach would be uh, one way of looking at it so that it can help people change the conditions and build a better world for themselves. So the primary purpose of critical research is not simply to study the social world but also to change it. So researchers conduct studies to critique and transform social relations by revealing the underlying sources of social control, power relations and inequality. So, so uh, researchers conduct studies to critique these social relations. So whether, whether there are relations of, of domination or, 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 or exploitation or such things, so we are looking at what are the sources of this social control. So for example, many people would see media to be a, a source of social control as well. And what are the power relations which are not obvious to, to the people uh, in the community, but a researcher would uh, try and critique, not just critique, but also try and transform these social relations. So it is best understood in the context of the empowerment of individuals. So it, it uh, at one hand, it shares the positivist uh, researchers premise that there is an empirical reality which is independent of our perceptions. And it also shares the interpretivist focus that we construct what we take to be reality from our subjective experiences. So I, I, I uh, think of reality in, in my own context based on my own experiences, my cultural beliefs and social interactions. But it goes beyond this, this uh, premise of uh, positivist and uh, uh, interpretivist research. So it adopts a critical realist ontology. So it's not just realist, but it's a critical realist. So if you remember the continuum between realism and, and nominalism, so, so it's uh, uh, not, uh, not a true realist, but a critical realist because it sees reality not as just one layer, something which we see in the empirical world, but something which is real and something which is actual. So uh, theories and research, uh, critical theories and research over time, can help us understand what are these structures operating at the real level and what are the causal mechanisms. So what are the mechanisms that generate and modify these structures? For, for example, what are these structures which allow this, this domination to, to uh, continue and, and how that can be uh, modified? So our experiences of empirical reality are always theory or concept development. So this is one of the assumptions of the critical social science. So our theories and concepts, both common sense and science, sensitize us to uh, particular aspects of empirical reality. Uh, uh, so so it, it, uh, it tells us what is relevant and, and uh, how do we categorize and divide its features. So uh, this is what uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the realist assumption is. But, uh, 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 and we also know that subjective meaning is important because everybody uh, has, has uh, uh, his or her own interpretation based on uh, the social context and that is what which shapes social relations. But uh, uh, far from that, that uh, reality that we, I spoke of in the earlier slide and the subjective meaning, the critical researcher probes the social situation and places them in a larger historical con uh, context and that is more important. Uh, another important uh, concept related to uh, uh, critical social science is the concept of bounded autonomy. It suggests that free will choices and decision making are not unlimited. They are within restricted boundaries and these are uh, cultural or material boundaries. So a so, so, so person in, 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 in that kind of a social setup can only make certain decisions which are, uh, which are bounded. So it, it is not totally autonomous. He is bounded by, by, by these uh, uh, structures of, of, of domination and exclusion and all that. And a very, very important concept of critical uh, social science is that of false consciousness. So it sees common sense as uh, something which is false consciousness. So what we regard as uh, uh, common sense is something uh, that is false consciousness. So people uh, uh, do not know what is right for them and they're often mistaken. So a lot of times we assume all that domination to be something which is natural or we assume, uh, uh, for example, capitalist exploitation to be something which is uh, natural, but uh, that is mistaken. And that is uh, what uh, uh, 
critical researchers suggest when they say that that is not uh, uh, real consciousness that is false consciousness because people are mistaken and they act against their own interests so our idea as researchers is to uh, let them know about what is uh, there in their uh, real interest so objective reality relies between uh, it, uh, reality lies between myth and illusion so uh, one of the approaches of, of critical social science is explanatory critique so it begins with a premise that uh, when we study social life we study both the thing and how people think or understand about the thing that we are studying so it's not just about the social life but how people think about that and also about uh, uh, the actual conditions and people's beliefs uh, so 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 they they may not always match so what is reality and and what is actuality it, it i mean what is what what people think to be uh, true may not actually be uh, so simple and there could be multiple layers to that so uh, the critical social uh, scientist is, uh, is an activist in certain sen uh, senses because it's a moral political activity that requires the researcher to commit to a value position uh, uh, so so in favor of the dominated in favor of the exploited and all that so it it uh, rejects the positivist uh, uh, value freedom that everything has to be value free no they take sides so it's not about uh, an empirical objective approach uh, it also separates the good from the bad theory by putting theory into practice so if if i put this theory into practice uh, what is the outcome so explanations are valued when they help people understand the world and to take action that changes it so so that's again a very important concept in uh, critical social science so uh, critical scientists often favor the uh, historical comparative method and uh, as i said that uh, to uh, look at the underlying uh, conditions of domination is what they are trying to find out thank you for for being in the discussion today